So as some of you know, a few nights ago, I posted a picture um, of the Seattle Ferris wheel. Uh, it was actually a picture from my cell phone of the back of the camera and kind of this scene that you see here in this picture. Uh, this is the big Ferris wheel down on the Seattle waterfront. I had traveled out to Seattle to visit family. The purpose of the trip wasn't photographic in nature, uh, mostly just to visit family. But, you know, of course, I brought a camera along with me as I almost always do. Um, I brought the 70D along with me to travel a little bit lighter and also just to continue to use it more and make sure I, you know, really get a feeling. I'm really, really happy with that camera. I think it's pretty telling that even um, though I always want a really good camera with me, uh, it was the 70D that I brought and not the 5D Mark III, which, you know, with its full frame goodness is, is a better camera. Um, but the 70D has really hit that nice sweet spot of price and performance and for what it offers. I've um, been really, really happy happy with it. And I tell you, I, you know, after literally just a few hours ago, slinging my camera bag off my back after traveling, um, you know, it was full with about 25 pounds of gear when I brought along some other stuff that I've been playing with and reviewing uh, along with my uh, laptop. And so it would be nice to travel even lighter. And so I'm really tempted uh, by those micro four thirds systems. I've played with the Sony. I've been really impressed with it. Uh, but it's it's hard to give up the quality that you're getting out of these full DSLRs. I shouldn't say use the word full because I'm not talking full frame, but just these DSLRs. So the sensors in them are really nice still um, and offer a lot. Anyway, so um, there is this Ferris wheel on Seattle waterfront and they light it up with LEDs. Um, and I'd had my eye on it and was like that. That could be a really cool picture, especially with the water below getting a nice reflection. Um, and so I finally got away from family um, fairly late on Saturday night. And um, as you can see, I got down and walked down past uh, the Pikes Place Market Center there um, at about 10 minutes to 11. Now, uh, a quick tip. I did not or I forgot to change my time in the camera based on the fact that I was out on the West Coast when I currently live on the East Coast. And you can see that the time the camera thinks I captured this picture was at 12.52 a.m. And the actual time that I captured it was, well, you can see right here, just about 10.52, so a two hour difference. I'm not quite sure why two hours uh, instead of three, maybe I never even set the camera time right, I'm not sure. I've got a couple different ideas there, but anyway, Facebook, or sorry, Facebook. Lightroom makes a really easy way to correct this. I can simply go to med metadata and edit capture time. But what would be nice is to do it to all of my pictures. And I can do that if I go into grid mode, select all of them in grid mode. Anytime you wanna make changes to metadata uh, to more than one image, you need to do it up in the grid. It doesn't matter if multiple are selected down here in the film strip, it's gotta be in the grid. Metadata, edit capture time, and I have a couple different options here, adjust to a specified date and time, shift or change to file creation date for each image. I'm gonna shift and I'm gonna minus, what, two hours? So it says 1052. It's very, very convenient that I happen to take a picture of this clock. We are assuming that the clock is correct, but we can see that the minutes were uh, correct. And I'm gonna say change all. And now it just adjusted the data time. And that was really fast because it just has to write a little bit or rewrite just a little bit of text information in there. So, you know, as I passed by, I took a picture of this neon sign. That's interesting, but uh, nothing spectacular. And I got down to the waterfront and I actually I should have posted or I should have shared an, an additional earlier image. I had been at the aquarium with family earlier in the day. Um, the, the Ferris wheel wasn't lit up, but I took a couple of shots of it to make sure that where I thought would be the best place to stand, focal length would be good. Um, because I am shooting on the 70D with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, you know, 24 isn't terribly wide, but it certainly was wide enough that I was happy here. And I got down there and it was spinning very slowly and it's kind of set up and took this first test shot that included the water, the reflection, kind of basically set up the composition that I wanted. Um, just did one, you know, 1.3 seconds here um, and F14, ISO 100. So important here, your gear really doesn't matter. You could do this with just about anything. You don't have to have a really nice lens. You're shooting 
at very small apertures because you actually um, are shooting long shutter speeds uh, to capture the light from the Ferris wheel. And um, there's a good bit of ambient light in the city at most of the times too. So that's why you got to stop down some or the whole rest of everything gets blown out. Plus these LEDs are very bright. So test shot. Ah, okay. Next, hey, this is pretty exciting. And then I really kind of didn't like where I was. And one of the things that I had in the back of my mind was I probably would have to take two shots, one of very long exposure to get the smooth water that I was hoping for, and one a slightly shorter exposure uh, to get kind of a cool pattern or LEDs uh, in the Ferris wheel itself. And then I would literally Photoshop those together, take the bottom half of the long exposure for the water and the shorter one for the top half. That was kind of in my mind. Um, and this shot looked all right, but you know, I'm starting to decide that I, I'm a little crooked to the wheel and I didn't quite like that. Uh, you can even switch over to the map here and you can see the Ferris wheel is right here. And you can see the couple different positions that I took. Now I haven't geotagged some more pictures you're gonna see in a second, but these are the first couple. Um, and you can see if you hold over, it shows you where those were, were taken from. I love that. Let's go back to the library here. So then I tried, I jumped right from 1.3 seconds to 8 seconds, stayed at f14. And that's blown out. Uh, we've got no detail in the center, kind of neat pattern here. Uh, and when you zoom in, it's pretty neat. I mean, basically, this is light painting on an extreme level. You have a giant wheel coated in LEDs, um, and that's great. So I thought, oh, I could start to work with this. And I also, I think, I had moved a little bit, but not a lot. Um, so I hadn't really decided yet that I didn't love my composition. And important point that I didn't mention is the wheel, I checked times. It said the wheel's running until midnight. You know, I got down there at 11. Um, I thought, hey, plenty of time. They shut off all of the interior LEDs right at, what, 11.07, according to this, or just before it. And I thought, well, okay, so they're just taking a little break, time out, resting the LEDs maybe. Nope, they stayed off. So I stayed here shooting. I moved a little bit now. You can see that this is at a slightly different angle. Also, straighten the horizon there too more carefully. Use the electronic level in the camera to straighten that. And these are neat, um, but you know, not terribly exciting. So I'm just really waiting for them to turn those LEDs back on. And while I'm waiting, the fairy comes in and I thought, all right, let's capture that. So it dragged the shutter there eight seconds and you get the fairy lights going by. And at that time, you can see that the Ferris wheel actually wasn't moving at all. It was just sitting there. And well, then it started going again and again. Fairly neat, but this isn't what I was looking for. Uh, this is 30 full seconds now to get that blurriness. And the water is softer, um, but you know, not terribly exciting. Moved on, and then I thought, well, okay, what are we up to now? We're up to 11.28, so about 20 minutes of standing around, taking just a couple of pictures. I moved over behind the fountain, thought, well, all right, I'll take the blurry kind of fountain picture, the Ferris wheel in the background, 13 seconds. You can see the Ferris wheel isn't moving at all. So not a lot, a lot going on. This picture is not great, yuck. And um, actually, that's right, it was shortly after this time, I don't have any more because they just, there was nothing more to take or to share. They didn't turn the center lights back on and I thought I was gonna to have to resign myself to something like this, which again, it's not terrible, but it wasn't what I was looking for. So walked back by the farmer's market now. You can see it's a few minutes after 12 a.m. And you see the capture time has shifted again. And I think that has to do with daylight savings time. So I will have to go back through and fix these and I took another picture here. I thought this is kind of neat. Usually this place is mobbed with people, but of course at midnight, not so much. And then I thought, well, let me get a slightly wider shot. Three seconds, let the um, some cars pass in front and get some streaks of light. That might be interesting. I don't know how I feel about these. I'm gonna work on them a little bit. One thing I did not bring a shutter release with me, I should have. Uh, so I was using the two second delay, which allows you to push that shutter button on the camera and then take your hands off. It settles down um, and then after two seconds, it takes the picture. So that was a little tricky with cars timing. I see some cars coming because uh, the street wasn't very busy and um, then push it and hope that they would pass through after the two second period and during the three second period that the shutter was open. Now, 
It happened that the next night was Sunday night. The Ferris wheel closed at 10, and I was able to get away just a little bit from the family, just a little bit um, before 9. And oh, this is 6.56 p.m., so I got to go through and fix these metadata. Um, and I kind of resigned myself to uh, going out to dinner. Well, <laughs> Yeah, just not not having a chance to go down there. But I got back to the apartment. Girlfriend said, it's still running. The lights are good. You want to go down there? And I said, let's do it. So got back down there and I was worried. I was like, well, it was about an hour before shut down last night that they stopped the interior LED lights. Maybe that's their thing. Maybe they don't want to be too flashy too late and really advertise before they're shutting down. But for whatever reason, they left them on and got down there, set up at... Um, or am I? Yeah. Set up 10 seconds, F10, just tried it out, too bright, and also um, just in, try to include a little bit more to the left, a little bit less of the reflection, kind of give you an idea of the place. Here we get 13 seconds. It was mostly stopped during this time, or actually completely stopped, I think, and just running these. This is, these are, this is a good, good look at where the LEDs are. They're on these central spokes, um, if you were confused about that. 10 seconds, a little bit of movement, you can see there. Um, and let's just keep moving along. And we just kept shooting. Another 10 seconds. I don't think these are in the right order. But this is where we are right now. So let us let me see real quick. Sort by capture time. Oh, they think they are in the right order. So let's go back to this one. Um, this is pretty neat. So the, the lights are now moving up and down those central spokes as it's spinning. 10 seconds, still a little too bright. Now I haven't done anything with any of these. We have the little um, edit icon in the bottom right corner that says I have developed adjustments. When I imported them, I did my import pop preset, which is simply plus, five, plus 15 clarity. That's the only thing that's been done to them. So just a tiny bit of clarity. This may be one of my favorites. We have this kind of central eye here. This was also visible as we were watching. And now is when I think we just about hit the right time. Four seconds, all the way up to F16. So we're not blowing out the wheel LEDs anymore. Um, the rest of this is a little dark, but we can bring that up in post. Of course, I was shooting all of these in raw file format. And then we just spent some time shooting it four seconds, uh, just watching the different patterns occur, depending on how fast it was spinning or slow, because obviously every once in a while they stop it um, to let people on or off. And it was stopped for a little while. And here it starts to spin again. No change to our settings, still F, uh, four seconds at F16. This is a pretty nifty one. Um, these little diamonds kind of shooting up and, or triangles maybe shooting up and down. Um, pretty cool. This one is neat. F4 again. And now you can see we also, well, back here a little ways, we switched to our um, portrait orientation from our landscape to get that reflection in the water like I was hoping to get. And some of these I'm really happy for. I haven't quite decided which one is my favorite. I'd love to hear from you all which one you like. Um, I'm not quite sure how to... Um, share how to ask you to tell me which one you like. Maybe I'll throw these up into a poll and see. This, um, actually this one is, no. This is interesting because if you can see down here in the thumbnail, it's very spirally. And this was the first one we got that we were like, yes, this is what we wanted. Um, but when you look up here, it's not quite as spirally. It's not nice, not quite as symmetrical, um, but it still is very cool. Very happy with that. Lots of blue. Um, that's very neat here as well. And this one is actually Christina's favorite. This is very different from the other ones we got. We now have changed our um, settings a little bit. We went a little bit longer, eight seconds in F20. Um, so we're getting our softer water. And I don't know if I'll still go with my plan or not to uh, merge the two of them. You can see that it wouldn't work so well in some of these because we do have a very different color reflection. But you know what, I think if I hadn't told you that, probably wouldn't notice. This one is very neat. This one might be one of my favorites, even though it kind of has these little artifacts here on the right. And this is my favorite, I think. Um, I might decide otherwise as we go down. Look, somebody's got a 
some hot LEDs right there. But otherwise, uh, I really like the symmetry in, symmetry in here. I love this one. They're coming down, and we have all that. And then try the 30 second to do the water. So this is if in case I want to take this water and place this below one of these other ones that I like here. Um, and then how do you celebrate getting the pictures you want? You go out to a really yummy sushi restaurant and take pictures of your dinner with a big camera and everybody stares at you. Not really. I don't care. Um, if I want to take pictures of something, I'm going to take pictures of it. All right. So I hope you got something out of this. I just show you how to change metadata. But what I wanted you to get out of this most was... Um, you know, if you want to make the pictures you want, you're going to have to work at it. I went down there. I stood down there for an hour in the cold. I'm not gonna, making this a sob story. I was pretty happy to do that. Um, and, but I was bummed that I didn't get the picture I wanted. I was able to go back a second night, take some of what I'd learned the first night, mostly where to stand for a nice symmetrical picture that I wanted. Um, and then just got lucky that they had the LEDs on still. If you've got any questions about this, you want to hear a little bit more about this, I've, I've talked about longer exposure light painting um, in a video. Uh, I've also talked about longer exposure waterfall. You saw that fountain too in a video. I'll put links to those down below. Um, I'm happy to chat more about this. Um, and what I, I might want to do is throw up one of these as a raw if you want to bring it down and edit it and see what you can get. Um, I, I don't think they need a ton of editing, but you could go in a lot of different directions with um, the way that you make it look. Uh, and I will be editing one of these and probably putting it up as the header image for at least a little while um, because I'm very happy with how these turned out. They're very cool. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, and please subscribe. And uh, exciting, first time in 30 days I've broken the 1 million minutes watched. So uh, that's you all, and I really appreciate you watching. It, it means a lot to me. Um, it gives my channel power um, when I talk to companies, and uh, uh, I appreciate that so much. So thanks so much, and have a wonderful evening.